Hey everyone, Ronaldo Offerman of Master School Dances. I want to talk to you a little bit about the Medicon, give you a walkthrough on how to set it up because there's been a lot of requests for it. Right now you are seeing the screen with the master page and I just made this profile, so it's a brand new profile, and I added the NO color beam. To the right you're going to see a webcam view of the Medicon. So first of all, how do you add the Medicon? You're going to go up here where it says controller tab and uh, choose console. You're going to notice that it says right here, preset ID, zero, nothing has been added, not a big deal. We're just going to right click on that and you're going to see where it says console and you're going to add Medicon big. Okay, awesome. Now, how do we know this is hooked up? Okay, you'll notice this is working. Now the LEDs here, you know, the uh, LEDs and all that are lit up, which is good. So you'll notice how it's all synced up, four and four. Everything is running. You'll see the LEDs are lighting up. Okay. What's going to happen? And what's the, how do you assign something? Well, the first thing I want to assign is the master. The easiest way to do this is, first of all, by going to the master dimmer, right? And um, I'm just going to right click on the master dimmer. I have to shift click or control click, I'm sorry. You see where it says link to console and then it says general dimmer. What that means is saying that the only button I can really choose is a general dimmer. You don't want to use one of these buttons here. You want to use a general dimmer. So I'm going to go ahead and click that. It says waiting for MIDI command. I'm just going to move it. Bam. If you use virtual DJ, it's kind of like the same thing. Now you'll notice that as I move this, the general dimmer now opens up and down. Woohoo! Great. Blackout button. Does not work instantly. Duh. Well, what you do is you go to your pages. And I'm going to do the endo color beam. I'm just going to right click, link to console, enable disable DMX output. And there we go. Now I have a blackout. Obviously, I want to do this with all the other fixtures. Okay, so now this works with pretty much everything here because, you know, let's say, for example, I don't have any programs made, right? But uh, let's say the color mixing all, okay? I just right click, I like to console, and I'm gonna do button activation. Now button activation means that as soon as I click, it's gonna activate that button, okay? Now, whenever I click on anything, see there, awesome. Okay, may not, if for some reason it turns into a flash button like you see there, which, which some of them, it will do this. It'll do the flash button, not always, but with certain buttons, it turns them into flash. You just double click here, and you choose an active level, on and off, outside active level, disable. What it's saying is active level, when you push a button, that's active. When you disable the button, or unrelease a button, that's outside. So inside, outside. So our active level, we want on and off. So when we push this, it goes on and off, on and off. Or maybe you just want it to be on the entire time. Completely up to you. We'll leave it on. Outside level, disable, meaning I don't want it to do anything at all. So now you'll notice, there it is. Of course, I can initialize it. If I want to disable it, let's uh, or, you know do the on-off. Let's do that real quick. So I click on on-off here. And I haven't done with this one. See right there? On-off for each one. That's so cool. Now. The other thing is, you'll notice a little tab here, okay? This is the, or I'm sorry, the t this tab here that says in it, as I click on stuff, you know, like for example, I click on this show, it'll allow me to select the speed for this particular show or the speed for this particular show. So when I select this button, it selects my color mixing, but it doesn't, or you know, this particular tab, but the tab doesn't change. Well, darn it, how do you do that? Well, let's say you want the tab to change along with it. So when you move these wheels, because let's say you map the wheels to your speed, I'll show you this in a second even more, uh, then um, you'd want to do select. So let's kind of go over that for a second, okay? Let's say that we have position circle. See right there, that little position circle right here. Okay, we're going to right click and we're going to link to console and we want it to act uh, button activation. Okay, now again, you'll notice that it's a flash button. So... We just have to kind of like, sorry, Windows has been kind of acting up on me or because it's, you know, running on a Mac. doesn't really care for this one too much. We're going to have it on and off with disable. Okay. Now it selects that particular button there. Okay. Let's see again. What was this one? This is 
position circle phase, okay? And uh, I'm going to do uh, the regular position circle. So I'm going to right click, link to console, button activation. We're going to have that as number two. Then we just right click on number two. And I know this is a few extra steps, but whatever. Uh, it's okay, good. I'm making sure it's still recording. I'm going to tell it again on and off and disable because I don't want the outside button to have anything. Okay. So there you go. You'll notice we're switching back and forth. But the tab isn't changing. Okay, now why is that important the tab changes? Well, let's say your wheel's here, right? We're going to right click on the wheel. So we're going to click on the star. You have the page dimmer, which allows you to control the overall page or dim. So let's do that real quick. And the wheel resolution, that's how tight you want the resolution to be um, as far as, you know, how sensitive. So like, for example, with that, it's on the main page. So that controls... It controls for the main page, so the overall show. So no matter which options are these, now I don't really care for it controlling the entire show. I like my wheels to control individual aspects. If you want it to control your entire show, then by all means, do that. Button dimmer function. So we're going to have the first one be the button dimmer function, okay, at the selected page and the selected button. That means that no matter where you're at, it's going to move that particular one, right? So... We're going to go to position circle phasing. And you'll notice how it's moving the dimmer. Oops, sorry. There we go. You'll notice how it's moving the dimmer. See right here? Dimmer is moving. Yeehaw. But then we're going to select the other one, the, the circle. And it doesn't change the tab. See where this is important? We want this wheel now to switch tab. Now, it'll do that if I click it. See, position circle. And it changes that. So if I move it at, let's say, 46% or 38%, right, and I move this one, it's still, you know, it's, it remembers for an individual tab. But if I click the buttons, it doesn't switch tabs. Now, first, you're like, well, that sucks because I don't want to sit there and move my mouse. Not a big deal. Not a big deal at all. We know that button one is for position circle phasing. So we're going to right-click on position circle phasing, and we're going to select a button, and then we hit one again. So one, when you see it there, there's a button activation and a select a button, okay? Now let me kind of readjust myself here. Now we're going to do the same thing for number two. Number two is the regular circle. Okay, so we're going to select or link to console, select a button, and we do number two. So now what happens is, as I click there, hang on one second, let's make sure... Oops. Okay, you'll notice that I accidentally clicked the wrong one. It says position circle, position circle phasing. Not a big deal. If you mess up like that, like I just did, because all my stuff is kind of backwards, you can just change it around there. Or you can delete it. So you can manually change it, but I'm going to delete it. You go to select, and there. Now you'll notice that as I switch, the tabs change. So what happens is activate activates the button, and then select selects that tab. You have to have both for it to actually activate the button and select it. And the reason they have it like this is because if you select, for example, the color mixing, right? I don't really want a dimmer tab for my color mixing. Maybe I don't want my colors when I select the colors. Let's say I have this button, these buttons for colors, and then I have these buttons here for movements. I want my movements to switch tabs, but if I jumped into a different color, I don't want, maybe I don't want this particular tab to uh, switch for colors. It's completely up to you. So again, this is fully programmable however you want. These buttons that are flash buttons, they can be flash, they don't have to be. Even this one, for example, remember the one I, I just showed you for the color mixing all? Just have it on off or leave it off there. So you can make that as a flash button. Let's mix that for a second. See, there's a flash button there. So let's say, for example, I just, I was making a strobe and when I hold that down as strobes, when I let go, it doesn't. You can do that with these as well. It doesn't really matter. So yay for that. I want this to select a page. So we're, let's do this the other way around, right? Instead of actually telling, uh, programming it by clicking a button, I'm actually going to tell it manually. And uh, let's say page, and I want it to select a page. So I click on that. Okay. And uh, we'll just kind of leave it like that. And then I'm going to choose, I'm going to uncheck select a page because I actually wanted to tell which page to select. So I want it to be for my master. Yes, master. 
for craps and giggles, we're going to go to page number two. You're going to notice there's nothing there. And then you go to page one, and it's something there. Now, the same thing applies for these, because this is channel one to page one, okay? Channel two, this one now is, you know, being controlled by the second one. So there it is there. Okay, so again, these are not, these are by page. So this is page one, channel one, page two, channel one. So they are respective. So again, you have tons of faders. You have eight faders here times 16 pages. Anyway, so let's, we're back on page one. We're going to right click here. Then we're going to select, select the page. Disable. So, uh, we don't want selected page. And we're going to choose Inno Color Beam. So now when I click one, or it goes back and forth between the master and the Inno's. Yay, super exciting. Okay. But now let's go back to the Inno's here, which are on page two, right? And uh, you see right here, let's go to the page tab. And we got dimmer. So we're going to right click, link to console, page dimmer function. And we're going to choose this. So now, page one, slider two, which is our NOs, controls that. Exciting. We went to a second one. Let's say the second one is for like Vizzies. You'll notice it doesn't control that anymore because that's now for a different light. Yay. Okay. Last thing to show you. This I was upset about and then I found a workaround. You'll notice here, let's say we have these moved all the way up, right? A certain show. Okay, all the LEDs are lit up to let us know they're activated. That's actually kind of cool. We go to page two. They reset. Not a big deal, you know, obviously, because they're on the bottom there. But then what happens is I have to bring them all the way down to the bottom to reset them back. So let's say I want them all, you know, have them all the way up top. I have all these lights on, you know, full levels or whatever I want. Okay. Then I go back to page one and it reset it all back. So how do you fix that? Okay. Because you're like, well, crap, and that means that, you know, these aren't really too usable in a live application setting. Wasn't thrilled about it. It's great for certain theatrical applications, no fun. So, what do you do? Well, we're going to go here, and we're going to go to Software Preferences. Check this out. Love it. We're going to go to Output Hardware. It is very important that everything is all the way down. Because if it isn't, it's going to screw you up. So make sure everything's down. All your LEDs should be off. Now, we're going to go to our, uh, MIDI setup. MIDI input, receive from all MIDI devices. If you are on Windows XP, it's not going to say MIDICon. It'll say like GS audio device or something like that. Just select everything. MIDI output, send to all D MIDI devices, right? This wavetable synth, yeah, that's also the MIDICon. So you want MIDI input and MIDI output. Now, what is this saying? This is now saying to CompuShow that the MIDI device, which is MIDICon, is going to send a, a MIDI signal back in. We're going to click OK. Oh, and by the way, on certain computers, like for example on mine, uh, the GS device may also be triggering MIDI notes. If it is, they only select MIDICon, okay? Otherwise, select everything. Now, you'll notice as I move these, the LEDs don't light up anymore. Sorry. If there's a way to fix it, we'll figure it out one way or another. I'm not really concerned about the LEDs. I can see whether these things are up or not. But again, let's say here we have, you know, on page one, we haven't moved up. We're going to go to page two. And in that page two, let's say is our park cams. We have them all the way up. I go to page one. It remember those settings. Obviously, as soon as you move it, it'll jump back up. But that's fine. That's to be expected. That's with almost any MIDI con or any lighting console. If I go back, it remembers that. I'm going to go to page three, and I only have these two up. Everything else is completely off. But again, it's really important because with if it resets every time you switch pages, let's say you have your NOs on page one, right? And you have your Vizies on page two. As you jump on page two for your Vizies, with the first mode, your NOs would shut off. Well, duh, you don't want that. So this mode here, you can jump pages without your, uh, with, and it remembers the settings of your sliders. That's really important, you know, stick with that. So again, that's it for that, but I hope that helps, and I hope you enjoy it. If you have any questions, comments, please make sure to comment on this video. And again, my name is Arnaldo with Master School Dances.